Aloha, welcome to the HK West Maui Community Fund Speaker Series. Um, we have Panani Pool from Pui Aloha Aina to introduce Hokuao Pellegrini. Thank you. Hello, Bianca. Lina mai kako, a mahalo ya oko i ke koa ako koa ana mai. Uh, this series is co-sponsored by HK West Maui Community Fund, the University of Hawaii, uh, Maui College Hawaiian Studies Department, and the Kue Petition Hui, and co-hosted by the Aikani o Maui Culture Center of Lahaina and the Hui Aloha Aina Okamaluru Olele. Um, this, these lectures occur monthly. The series features a host of new and established scholars and also innovators in their research and their work uh, on Hawaii and Hawaiian communities. We probably present this to you um, via Zoom and live through HK West Maui's Facebook page. Tonight's presentation, Reclaiming and Restoring Hawaii Systems in Navaiha. Uh, Hokua Pellegrino is the president of Huyo Navaiha. Uh, Huyo Navaiha is a nonprofit established in uh, 2003. Uh, the Hui determined the address and negative impacts caused by the dewatering of Navaiha streams by sugar plantations and corporate water companies. The mission of the Hui is to advocate for Moka to Makai Stream floor restoration in Waikapu, Wailuku, Waihu, and Waihe streams, Navaiha. Pellegrino works on his family's uh, Nohoana farms in Waikapu. Uh, give a round of applause. Tonight's speaker, Aloha Nui. Okuwa Pellegrino. Ah. Mahalo Nui Kanani and Mahalo Bianca and all of you for joining uh, us this evening. And just bear with me as I try to share screen here and get started. Hey, Irina Mike Aloha, Ovao Pellegrino, Noka Aino, Okamakani, Kololio, or Yohoi, O Waikapu, Kiahupa, and Ohoi, or Waikapu, Mayao. Mahalo, Mahalo, Ya Oko, Papa, Ya Pound, Noki, Kipa, Anna Mai, Ike, Yahayo, Lalo, Pileana, E. Koi, Koi, Anna, E. Kavai, Kavai, no Navai, Eha. Hi, hola, hola, I, I really appreciate this opportunity to um, share with all of you a little bit about the work that um, our organization, Huyo Novai Eha, has been doing over the years. Um, as Kanani had mentioned, we were established in 2003, uh, formalized, I guess, in 2004. Um, and um, our organization has uh, a plethora of kuleana, but uh, first and foremost is the uh, restoration and stewardship of our four ahupua'a streams and rivers, known as poetically known as Nova'i'eha, which encompasses Waikabu Stream, Wailuku River, Wa'ehu Stream, and Waihe'e River. Um, tonight, I'm gonna try my best to take you um, around Nova'iha and, and giving you a brief cultural and historical overview of the resources that um, existed, uh, still continue to exist in this area, all as it relates to Vai. Um, and then we will take you through a little bit of our case, um, our two contested cases that we partook in over the last 17 years, 18 years, and the work that the Hui is doing currently, um, amongst many things, we are trying to reclaim and restore traditional OA systems in the White Eha now that our the final uh, Commission of Water Resource Management decision and order was um, enacted uh, almost exactly one year ago in 2021 that allocated um, over 8 million gallons of water to for Kuleana uh, water use uh, via the water use permitting process. Um, and the challenges that, that come with that um, 
and the work that our organization has to ensure that these permits, um, the allocations, um, and just overall the rights of Kuliana uh, landowners and Kuliana Kalo farmers are being upheld. So let's just jump right in. I kind of wanted to start this evening um, giving thanks and um, gratitude to the many kupuna um, and kupa, kupa oka aina of Nabai Iha that um, have really set the kahua and the foundation to which the work that we, we stand on. And, you know, in 18 years, while that may be a, a short period of time, we've, we've lost many. Um, uh, many good people, many people who have helped us um, and guided us and, and, and led us to where we are today. And we wouldn't really, we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here, I believe, if it weren't for many of these um, individuals that, that really gave their just unwavering aloha to the white and the work that we do. The upper left-hand corner, we have Uncle William, uh, our, excuse me, Uncle Kenneth Kahalekai, who recently passed away. He was one of the largest wetland kalo farmers in the Baiha in the Aupa of Wahe'e. And his ohana still continue to cultivate kalo until they on their Aina Kuleana. In the bottom left, we have Auntie Diana uh, Laigu, who also recently um, passed away, uh, born and raised in the Ahupa of Wahe'e, Kuliana Kalo farmer, and much gratitude to her descendants who continue to cultivate and advocate for their Kuliana water rights in Wahe'e. Uh, the middle picture on the top, that's um, Uncle Wayne Rosario, who is a neighbor of mine uh, here in the Ahupa of uh, Waikapu where my ohana is from and where we cultivate a kalo on our kuleana land. And he's also a kupa of this place of Waikapu, he's a kakit ohana. Um, and, you know, was there for the restoration of our lo'i kalo amongst, you know, sharing mo'olalo and you know, just a really, um, a man with a lot of aloha uh, for this place of Waikapu. Below is our, our um, former um, founder and president, Uncle John Dewey. Very recently, in the last two weeks, passed away. And uh, if it weren't for Uncle John, I don't think many of us would be doing what we're doing right now. Um, for he had the foresight, the vision, um, and, and aloha for this place that we call Nawai'i Ha. Next to him is Uncle Teruyo Kamasaki who is um, also a kupa of Waikapu and gave his life working for the sugar plantations in Wailuku, for Wailuku Sugar Company, Wailuku Agribusiness, and later became one of our greatest um, advocates for the restoration of our streams, not only because he saw um, destruction that these stream diversions were doing, also what it was doing for Kuliana Kalo farmers that were, like himself, were not able to get water to cultivate food for his ohana. And then in the upper right, we have Auntie Zeli Rogers Harders, also from Waikapu, and um, you know, lineal descendant of this place. Uh, and her ohana continued to, you know, to live on her legacy of, of farming and cultivating and taking care of the land. And last but not least was a really good friend of mine who passed away too young. Um, comes from the Ahupua of uh, Waikapu here, uh, Luke McLean. Um, he descended from a long line of Makaivi, Kuamu, and Pelakai uh, Kupuna, and who's also of this place and um, really was committed not just restoring our streams and farming kalo, but committed to understanding and, and, and teaching and educating others 
one big importance of really understanding what Mokotum High Watershed Resource Management look like. So I dedicate this presentation to uh, these folks um, who I'm just very grateful to have had in my life. So I, I guess we kind of start, you know, my Kino Himai from the beginning, right? And, and understanding water resource management from a Kuana Ike Hawaii, from a Hawaiian perspective, um, you know, the hydrologic cycle can be, can have very fancy diagrams and models and, and sustainable yields and understanding how, you know, water, you know, percolates into the ground and comes back up into the atmosphere and comes forth in, in the forms of Ua and uh, Wailele and Kahawai, but really Himelino Kane grounds us in our understanding of truly where our, our water sources come from, um, from the clouds, to the mountain peaks, Kiawawa and Kahawai, from our valleys uh, and, our, and our rivers, Ayayikai um, Kamoana, in our fresh waters found in our sea and in our ocean. Kiaoli, Kiao Ele Ele, in the heavenly blue, in the black held clouds. Aya Ilalo Ikahonui Kawai Hua, deep in the ground, in the gushing springs. And um, it's important for us, I think, as we talk about Vai to really understand um, our kupuna's relationships and pilina and connections with Vai really from Mauka to Makai and not just what flows forth in our stream and the water that we, we, we visibly see, but also the water, the way that we don't necessarily see. And water resource management, uh, the life-giving waters of Kane are, are really, um, again, going back to that Mauka to Makai uh, perspective and understanding uh, traditional agriculture and aquacultural systems and how they tie in with each other and how they benefit each other and how they build upon each other. And these traditional you know, water management and distribution systems uh, really, <clears throat> you know, in, from this perspective that we're, or this discussion that we're having now is really focused on the Kahawai and the Awai and the Lo'ikalo systems that depend on these um, irrigation systems that have been developed by our, our kupuna and the, the stewardship management and overall um, care of, um, of these resources. And so in the moku of Kuali Kumohana, also known as Wainuku, poetically known as Nawai uh, we can see here on this map um, how extensive this, this moku really is. Um, it is the second largest moku in the island of Maui. Um, the first being uh, the Moku of Kula uh, to the east of Nawai Eha. And you can see that three or three northernmost rivers and streams flow forth to, towards the Bay of Kahalui, uh, towards the north, towards Kahakuloa. And the Ahupu of Waikapu being our smallest stream, but also our longest reaching stream, uh, traverses the central Maui plains of Kama'oma'o to the south. Um, feeding the local way or wetland of Kealia, eventually pukaing out into the Bay of Ma'alaya via the estuary of Palalau. The Vaieha uh, is um, you know, like our other moku here on uh, West Maui of Lahaina and Ka'anapali, have a plethora uh, and an extensive, diverse native ecosystem. That includes endemic and indigenous plants and birds and insects and all the above. And our, our, our peak, you know, our um, highest mountain range of Kui, uh, located on the summit of Mauna O'eka, also known as West Maui Mountains. It really is one of the wettest places on earth um, and provides life in springs and tributaries and rivers and streams and, and estuaries and wetlands. <clears throat> the Vaitiha has also um, just an extensive amount of uh, Vahipana and Mo'olelo, and um, at one point was the primary ritual, political, royal, and population center of Maui. It really was 
uh, the focal point of this island. And, and a lot of it had to do, yes, around Vai and food production, but also the significance of, of Yao, which really could be its own presentation. Um, and, and the importance of the waters that flow forth there being that not only some of Maui's, uh, not only Maui's highest ranking ali'i, but also some of Hawaii's highest ranking ali'i were interred, um, interred in this valley, many of which that were interned in the Kahawai via underwater uh, caves um, that were protected and stewarded by those uh, that that um, would caretake this valley, uh, which is why so many attempts were made to uh, to conquer Maui was because of that mana that this important vahipana um, contained. Right, there were more heiau that were documented um, in the Waiiha than or Wailuku, the Moku Wailuku than any other Moku on the island of Maui. And we have Mo'olelo that pertain to, you know, Kihawahine to Pua Pua Lana Lana and Waikapu to Haumea, um, all the way to, you know, Maui and his work to, um, you know, slow the sun down in Haleakala. And some time earlier in Pai Loko uh, today, just talking a little bit about, you know, the kumuniu and the coconut trees, uh, which were cut down by Maui in, the, in his work to, to make the aha, the aha new, the cordage, help al ahele'i of kala on Haleakala. Navai'iha and portions of Navai'iha was also known as the Baua Puone because of the, um, the long stretching sand dunes that range anywhere between six and eight miles long from Waihe'e all the way to Waikapu. These dune systems played a major role, not just in uh, fortifying, uh, the efforts for Maui warriors to protect themselves but really were the places in which many of uh, the kupuna of Nawaiiha were buried. And we, we see the destruction that plantation and development uh, and just overall changes to our landscape have really impacted these dune systems. And the fact that these dune systems were not just, again, a cultural feature, but an important geological feature feature um, that protected the Mauka fertile uh, regions that we'll talk in a little bit more about today. <clears throat> um, each of the Ahuwa'an white in, in the white uh, included wetlands. So in, in Wahe'e, there was Kapoho, in Pailoko, in Waehu we had uh, Ka'ehu o Kamoi, or uh, Ka'ehu. Um, in the Mokwa, uh, Ahupa of Wailuku, there was Kanaha and Mauoni. And of course, our largest wetland uh, on the island is in the Ahupa of Waikapu, all the way to the south, adjacent to Ma'alaya Bay, known as Kialia, where some of the best producing uh, pa'akai and salt was made here in the island of Maui. Diving into the land tenure of the Waikiha, um, outside of the Moku of Lahaina, um, there were more Mahale awards that were, uh, or Kuriano lands that were awarded at the time of the Mahale than really any other moku, again, other than Lahaina uh, on the island of Maui in our 12 moku. And those total awards ranged uh, a little over 600. And the, the actual acres that were, um, that were awarded uh, was a total acreage, it was more than 6,000 acres. And the Hawaiian language documents that were associated with these um, uh, Mahale awards specified not just only Lo'ikalo cultivation, but the cultivation of Uwala and Ulu and Wauke and Hala um, and different types of Lo'ikalo cultivation, um, Lo'i Pa'ahau, Lo'i Po'alima, Lo'i Aupuni. Um, we also see that they were already growing uh, sugar in large, you know, um, cultivated plots much larger than what was done prior to Western contact. They were growing mango, they were growing coffee, um, and as well as descriptions about the construction of extensive Hawaii systems and pahale and heiau and mo'opa'akai and paholoholona, which again, obviously we're talking about by today. 
And so these irrigation systems, um, we know the uh, Blue Pepper and Land Commission Award that Waikapu had four documented Hawaii systems or irrigation dishes um, that were constructed anywhere between the, the 14th and 16th century. Wailuku had five documented uh, Hawaii, two of which were the largest Hawaii systems on the island of Maui, and we'll definitely be talking a lot about them today, uh, this evening, specifically the Kama and Kalani Hawaii. Uh, Waihu had between two and three uh, Aowai systems. Um, unfortunately, we, we are not aware of their, you know, what those names of those Aowai were. And Wahe'e also had three um, uh, Aowai systems, two of which are continued to be used today, which we commonly call the North and South Ulema Aowai. Here in 1890, this particular photograph, one of my favorite photographs, you can see um, right at the entrance of Yao, uh, entrance of uh, entering Yao Valley. Um, you can see the Wailuku River on the right and that uh, ditch system that you see kind of right be, uh, below the, the, uh, the head of the horse. That is the Kama Away. You can see um, that, that how much water was being uh, delivered in that system. We know that almost 1,500 uh, to 2,000 acres of Lo'ikalo um, in Wailuku uh, relied on that particular source. And this next photograph, um, if you look, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor uh, here, and I apologize if you can't, but you see that field of sugarcane. This is a 1934 photograph of Yao Valley, um, aerial, sh aerial shot that was done. Um, you can see the, obviously the Wailuku River, um, you know, coming Mauka to Makai. At this particular point, the stream was uh, almost 100% diverted. So you can, if you look really closely, you don't see much water, if at all. Um, you see on the right side um, some Kuriana lands that are still being cultivated uh, in Lo'ikalo. And then just below the sugarcane field, which is now what we call Pu'ohala uh, Camp. You see kind of that line, it almost looks like a road um, just below it. Again, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor and I apologize, but that's the Kalani Away. That's the Away that fed all of the Kuliana lands uh, to the, the north, uh, excuse me, to the north of Wailuku River. And really important to um, notate that because um, part of that Away is uh, still being utilized today, even though the connection to the stream is, is not there, but uh, an old plantation system still drops down and feeds a portion of the Kalani Awai today. So Navaiha really was the Fertile Crescent of Maui. Um, you know, I, some may dispute that. I, I would say uh, Lahaina, um, you know, the Moku of Ko'olau, or, uh, probably equivalent of that. When we look at the total acreage of Lo'ikalo that was cultivated, it really was unmatched. Um, we, you know, based on research that we have done, you know, over the last you know, two, three decades, uh, we can confidently say that there were, conservatively speaking, that there was at least three thousand acres of wetland kalo that was uh, cultivated. But we know that it was likely more, being that you know the time of the Mahele was already seventy years was more than 70 years after uh, Western contact. We know that many of the upper regions of Nova uh and those Lo'ikalo complexes were abandoned. Um, in fact, the, the last Kuleana Award that was awarded in Wailuku uh, was right by Kewan, Kepaniwai Park. But if, if you've ever hiked in Yao Valley, you will see for another half mile, um, a multitude of extensive Lo'ikalo systems abandoned. Um, but none of those were awarded, right? The top of the Mahale. So we know that there was a lot more kalo that was being produced. And um, you know, when when Handy uh, and Pukui were doing some of their surveys in the early 1930s, um, you know, they deemed Nava'iha as the largest contiguous kalo growing region in, in all of Hawaii. And Waikapu, just for an example, deemed the smallest watershed, the longest stream, but the smallest watershed and output in the stream. Um, sustained 1,400 documented Lo'ikalo on roughly 900 acres of land. 
Um, you look at the river of Wailuku, you look at Wahe'e River, um, those, those rivers flow uh, four, five, six times the amount of Waikoku. So it kind of gives you a clear indication and picture of just how much kalo was produced. And, and not that only that was kalo being produced for those that resided in the Waikoku, Harbor, but we see a ton of records talking about um, poi and pa'iai being delivered um, and distributed uh, in other places around Maui and even uh, uh, across uh, other, you know, uh, other islands like Lanai and Molokai. So on the bottom, this is an estimated kalo yield calculation that we uh, put together for, again, half the amount of acreage in the white Iha. And, and so we believe that at any given time, um, and the, again, another reason why we use the 3,000 acres versus the 5,000 or 6,000 is because we know that not all what we call um, were under cultivation all at the same time, right? We know that our coconut practice regenerative um, farming practices and, um, you know, ensured that the um, nutrient uh, were nutrients of, of these uh, agricultural complexes were sustained and being upheld to ensure that they had the highest quality of color being produced. So even if we just take half that amount of 3,000 acres, we know that Novaiti Novai Ha produced anywhere between 40 to 60 million pounds of color a year. And just to give you a little statistic, uh, currently in Hawaii, we produce uh, pai aina white from Kauai to Hawaii, we produce less than 1.2 million pounds of, uh, of, uh, of kalo a year. So <clears throat> being that Nawai'i Ha was the largest contiguous kalo growing region, being that Nawai'i Ha had a, um, a plet plethora of water resources, um, it should be no surprise that there was pressure by foreign entities to uh, manipulate uh, these systems, to overtake these systems, to build on the backs of these systems that are kupuna built and established uh, and, and stewarded for a multitude of generations. And you know, we see that with the with the Mahela, the Mahela Nui, you know. Some people call it the great Mahele. I, I, I sometimes uh, call it the not so great Mahele. While I appreciate the fact that um, our, many of our kupuna received lands, um, when you look at the total amount of you know, acreage, you know, pai aina wide, and the total uh, allocated amount, um, it's, it's minuscule, you know? Um, and, and so many of those lands were retained by the crown and the government. And you know, following the Mahele, many of those lands were sold. Um, some sold to Kanaka, but many sold to foreign entities for establishment of the sugar industry, which was birthed right here in Nawaiiha and lasted literally 193 years. It began with small plantations like the William and uh, the Bailey Plantation, the Bell and Adams uh, Sugar Mill, the Lures Plantation in Waihe'e, um, the Waikapu Plantation under Cornwall's um, uh, management. But what we see eventually is two entities really coming out of this and kind of gulping up these, these entities. And we see that with Wailuku Sugar you know, uh, acquiring all of these smaller mills and eventually establishing themselves uh, between 1862 and 1988 um, as sugar wanes and, and you know, due to labor laws and um, just overall costs of um, you know, managing these systems, these irrigation systems, just overall plantation uh, politics and, and whatnot. Um, Wailuku Sugar began to diversify and created Wailuku Agribusiness in the 1980s and uh, tried their hand at pineapple, tried their hand at macadamia nuts, tried their hand at dairy farming, <coughs> um, and really uh, failed to make um, these monocrops a, a go for the long term. So eventually in 2004, Wailuku Agribusiness sold 100% uh, of all the agricultural lands, most of which went for, um, to developers, which is why we see all these you know, large-scale developments happening in Waihu and Wailuku and in Waikapu. 
those are all former sugarcane lands. And prior to that, many of those lands were um, utilized by Kupuna and, and were Kuriana lands utilized for cultivating kalo. So today we're left with Wailuku Water Company managing you know, a little over 6,000, 7,000 acres of watershed lands and um, you know, 10 to 15 miles of ditch system diversions and, um, uh, and users. Same thing went for Hawaiian Commercial Sugar Company. They gulped up, you know, Ha'iku, Kihei, Pa'ia, A&B, you know, Kaiua, all these other plantations. Um, and they had a run from 1878 to 2018. And currently we have, um, you know, um, Mahipono in place uh, on those same exact lands. So what were some of the adverse impacts, right? We know that plantations obviously early on recognized the value of water and began diverting streams, pretty much using the same systems that our Kupuna had. But 1860s were, were, was a really uh, critical decade because that's when we see some of the first water rights cases in Hawaii. That's when we see uh, water rights of Korean lands being challenged. That's when we see um, you know, plantation really uh, uh, being established and, and, and taking a stronghold, not just on the land side, but also in uh, the policies and politics um, you know, interwoven within the Hawaiian kingdom. The 1880s, you see existing you know, traditional Hawaii systems being rerouted from Kuliana lands to the dry central plains, also known as the Waikapu and Wailuku commons. Today we call that area, you know, Kahului. Um, but the central plains of, of Kama'oma'o were dry land forests. You know, and, and shrubland of, of native species. And, um, and those sand dunes played an important part in buffering, again, uh, the wind and uh, the dust and just the overall, you know, um, keeping that soil in, uh, in, 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 in play. You see those, that being challenged, you know, even today with, um, you know, HCNS leaving and uh, some of the central Maui plains you know, turning into a dust bowl as Mahipono tries to you know, cultivate those lands. Um, in 1910, one of the largest uh, irrigation systems was built with the capacity to divert you know, upwards of 75 million gallons out of Wahe'e, Wa'ehu, and Wailuku River, um, uh, uh, which was known as the Wahe'e Canal. Today, we call it the Wahe'e Ditch. Um, of course, in you know, the 2000s, uh, we see Wailuku agribusiness selling off um, all of the agricultural lands and becoming a, a water company, right? And selling water for developers, golf courses, commercial businesses, and so on and so on. Um, if you look at all of the water rights cases from the very beginning, from the Hawaiian Kingdom all the way to today, everything that you see in yellow pertains to Navai Eha. And so you can see that, uh, you know, there were Koreana farmers against plantations, plantations against Koreana Kalo farmers, plantations against plantations, you know? Um, and while many of these you know, cases were happening and, and being decided on, um, many of our Kuliana Kalo farmers are falling to the wayside. <clears throat> and the voices of our people um, was not left unheard. Uh, as we began our water rights case in 2004, uh, we were tasked to you know, develop the, the cultural impact assessment and myself and of course Broth and Dr. Kavika Tengan and, and others uh, spent many a days and nights researching and translating documents and this particular one that we found, 1866 article, only four years after the establishment of Wailuku Sugar Company, um, stated, Awe, pau Wailuku ika mahiko, despair, Wailuku is being destroyed by the sugar plantations, declaring that the land of Wailuku is being lost due to the cultivation of sugar cane. Uh, we fear that Hawaiians of that place will not, no longer be able to employ and that there will only be hard crackers which hurt the teeth when eaten, a cracker to snack on that does not satisfy the hunger of the kanaka. kanaka ika Let it be known that the Hawaiian people are accustomed to being koi. And this goes on. And on, not just one or two or ten articles, but to date we found over over two hundred articles pertaining to uh, the disruption, the decimation, destruction of uh, of 
the, 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 the kupa okaina, the way of life of these taro farmers. Mailuku is the river that is spread out for the farming of taro because the taro patches are many from the ocean of Nehe entering the cliffs of Piao. However, in this period of time, sugar is becoming acquainted with instead of taro. The sugar cane is nagging to fill the taro patches. It is as if there are only a few years left and all the taro patches will be gone and there will only be sugar cane. Um, the valleys of Waikapu, Waehu, Wahe'e are becoming encroached upon by the energy of the foreigner, developing their cane bearing powers. Ancestral kala patches are being filled up or shut in. The question was left to a jury of hungry natives from Wailuku to Kaupo to decide on. It would not be difficult to imagine the verdict. A bundle of 25 pounds of point kalo for 25 cents. Shade of Kamehameha the Great, send us. Um, you know, this just goes on and on. Um, you know, more and more water rights cases and, and being that kalo farmers became the pawns in, 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 these, in these cases. We are informed that another of those intricate water suits will be instituted by parties living in Wailuku against the Wailuku Sugar Company. The suit will be the result of an attempt on the part of the Wailuku Corporation to divert the feeders to the Wailuku water course that supplies all of the taro lands of the valley and thus rob the taro patches belonging to the tenant of its supply of water. And so, I mean, let's call it what it is, right? It's, it, it was a turbulent history. Um, it, it, and it still is. You know, we're still trying to navigate through you know, almost 200 years of, um, of theft and just dewatering of our, of our streams. And it is why we had to formalize something. It is why we had to organize and leverage what remaining resources and kupuna <coughs> and kanaka were left in the Vaiiha were genealogically uh, and culturally tied to this region. Um, and I am forever um, you know, grateful for the leadership of our past leadership, the current board that we have. Um, you know, we, I, I say this all the time. Um, I think the Hui has like <clears throat> a stellar all-star team, you know, Hua Heva Heva, Sian Dene, Lani Eckhart Dodd, Sevilla, Vicky Alapu Afredis, Kaika Nakahashi, Kamalani Uihara, Bonani Delanu, Mariana Loi Gersmar, Apuni Awohi. Now, I call these names, I honor these individuals because they they're not just they're not just committed to being a part of this organization and, and our board, but come to the board with a just an unbelievable amount of ike that is tied to the areas that they represent in the Waiiha, not just their Ahupua'a, but the greater uh, region and the ike that they have around agriculture, the ike that they have around water resource management, mo'olelo, um, you know, there's no way we could do what we do as an organization without these, these individuals as a collective. And of course, our legal team, you know, from you know, Pam Wan and Isaac Moriwaki and Kapua's support from you know, the UH Law School and Maui Tomorrow as well is being a critical role. And just the overall community supporting our mission, not just to restore and steward our Maokuramakai, you know, uh, stream flow, but also to protect the natural and cultural resources and ensuring that our Kuleana is, you know, to, to educate uh, the next generation about water resource management and, and overall stewardship. And so, yep, you know, I mean, it's, it's all over the newspapers. It's, you know, it's, um, it's a story that has been told over and over and over again, you know, from the 1800s to now. And, um, you know, we've been uh, very fortunate because of our founding members and our board and our community um, and our current board to have all of these successes from being one of the first places in Hawaii to designate our groundwater and surface water as a surf, you know, as a um, water management area, in implementing some of the first interim in-stream flow standards 
uh, beginning in 2010 and 2014, um, coming to the table with large corporations like Mahi Fano to create a settlement agreement to minimize their use, uh, their prior use, uh, you know, the predecessor's use of upwards of 40 million gallons, now down between to, you know, 5 million gallons of, of water from the Bai'i Ha, being that most of that water has now been put back into the stream. Um, you know, and it, it does come with a lot of kuleana and a lot of um, monitoring that we have to do to ensure compliance, accountability, enforcement. Um, and this happens with, with um, you know, having a really strong board and, and uh, support system. And really, why we care, Malkuts and Makai. And, you know, yes, we're talking about Hawaii systems, we're talking about on the Kalo cultivation, but again, from a Kuana Ike Hawaii, our water resources play such an important role in so many, so much other facets uh, of our watersheds. And first and foremost, right, we, we do what we're doing because we're speaking up for for those that don't have a voice, and which are native aquatic species. Um, and these species um, are are so critical to our um, our way of life. Um, our sustenance, um, part of our food systems, um, their ability to provide the nutrients that our Lo'i Kalo and estuaries and our nearshore fisheries need to, to thrive. So protecting native aquatic species is really one of the highest priorities we have. Safeguarding our groundwater and aquifer uh, for aquifer recharge. You know, Many people don't realize that 75% of all of our drinking water on the island of Maui derives from the Iao Aquifer. And there were studies that were done that showed um, that if there was no aquifer recharge that was going to occur at some point, um, then our entire island would be in disarray. Um, and, and this is not you know, scare tactics, but this is scientific data. And, and data that came out of you know, USGS that talked about our wells being over pumped and the sustainable yields um, being abused and uh, you know the potential for saltwater intrusion to occur in these aquifers, which would just decimate our way of life here in the island. Advocating for traditional and customary Hawaiian rights. And it's not just, again, speaking on behalf of the Kula and Akala farmers, but it's also about the the, how these Awai systems and how these low Kalo systems play in, in providing life to that that is below, right? Our estuaries, our near shore fisheries, our reef habitat that um, that needs that vaikai, that brackish water for nimu and uh, you know to grow for our uh, for our, not just our ita but our honu as well, and revitalizing our springs in the lower regions of our stream. And these wetlands, as I spoke earlier, were you know, um, were profound. <coughs> our near shore fisheries, our reef system, was two of the best, well, two of some of the best reef systems on the island of Maui existed in the Baiiha. That which the rate that, that stand from Waehu to Wahe, and that which is uh, of Ma'alaya Bay. Almost 80% of the reef system in Ma'alaya in the Ahupa of Waikapu is dead. Um, you know, and we still see an abundance of life thriving in um, the reef system from Wahe'e to Wa'ehu, but even that is being um, being you know challenged because of the, the, the many issues that we're having in the Malco reaches of our of our watersheds. And last but not least, you know our organization supports aesthetic values, education, research, recreation. You know, <clears throat> maybe some of you folks on this. Uh, Listening in, um, remember growing up, you know, prior to the restoration of Wailuku River, you wanted to swim in Wailuku River, um, you had to go above the diversions, you had to go up into Kipani Wai Park or even above Kipani Wai Park to enjoy um, the abundance that that stream provides, as everything below it was 100% diverted. You know, I like, we, we like to see our keiki and our kupuna gathering enjoying, relaxing, swimming in all parts of our streams. And, and you can see that today. You know, even in the, as, as, as detrimental as a channelized portion of Wailuku River is, you know, it, it's, 
it's wonderful to see Katie, you know, going on the boogie boards, flying down, you know, the, the stream there, or you know, Kupuna and, and Next Generation gathering Opai and Hikibai in you know, in the, the lower reaches of Waluku River in Nehe and in Pokukalo. Um, it, it really is a sight to see. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I just wanted to kind of show you what uh, what these figures look like, you know, uh, between 1900 and 2003, all of our streams in Hawaii were 100% diverted. There was absolutely no Malkut Makai stream flow. Um, and as we as we uh, navigated through our um, water rights case, uh, you can see that you know there were uh, a number of challenges. <coughs> and our you know our first contested case uh, hearing. It was only, um, you know, the hearing officer and the final decision provided only 27% of, of the, the flow to be restored, leaving Waikapu and Wailuku dry, having, uh, you know, us to appeal all the way up to the Hawaii Supreme Court and, and uh, unanimously winning uh, in that case, forcing Wailuku Water Company and HCNS back to the table um, and to, to, to release water. Um, uh, and to restore Mount Makai Street flow in Waikapu and Waikapu. And today, we have 54% of the total um, stream flow of Nova flowing Mount Makai. You can see to the second to the last slide at the bottom, you see the 64% or the 28.8 million gallons per day. Um, it's something that we uh, wanted in our, um, you know, and, and fought for in our most recent contested case hearing, um, but we're denied. Um, but we are appealing to the Hawaii Supreme Court as we speak uh, right now, uh, because we, we, we strongly believe uh, based on, on scientific data um, and the research that we have done um, over the last two decades, that there absolutely is more water in Wahe'e um, River that can be restored. We believe that additional 4 million gallons can be restored to Wahe'e River, which is what we're advocating for in our appeal to the Hawaii, currently the Hawaii Supreme Court. <coughs> and so you can see what our stream looked like pre-restoration um, in 2010. You see the lower reaches of Nehe and Pankukalo, where the stream was completely dead. Um, you can see after 2014, you can see what Wailuku River uh, looks like in that particular reach uh, of the stream. Um, that required you know, the sealing and closing of certain diversions. And you can see Uncle John in the middle, bottom middle picture there um, at the low flow uh, Spreckles Ditch intake on Wailuku River in uh, Happy Valley area that HCNS uh, completely sealed to ensure that water was flowing uh, beyond the area to reach Malkut and Makai. Um, the above picture, we can see Uncle John before the restoration of Wailuku River if you look at the bottom of that picture, you see uh, a dead Oopu Nakea um, that somehow was trying to, you know, migrate upstream, but obviously didn't make it because there was there was no water. Um, and today it's not it's not that case anymore, which we're very uh, grateful for. Again, I won't spend a little bit uh, too much time on this, but this is a little bit about um, you know a lot of questions are asked like who are the main diverters now in the White you know, PCNS is really out of the picture. And um, so Mahipono, um, which is now the current landowner, cultivates you know, much more than 3,700 acres, but the water that um, they utilize from the Waiiha feeds a, a total of 3,700 acres. And if you see the, the, uh, the points below, HCNS at its prime was taking you know, upwards of 40 million gallons a day from uh, Waehu, uh, Wahe'e River, Wa'ehu Stream, and Wainuku River. Um, after HCNS phased out of sugar and was trying to do biofuels, they requested 20 million gallons in our second contested case. <clears throat> we obviously know that uh, selling to Mahipono and um, had an agreement um, back in 2019 that they could utilize 11.22 um, million gallons per day, along with 10 other legally binding commitments. But the Water Commission, uh, interesting enough, in their final decision last year in 2021, um, reduced that amount even more to uh, just about 5 million gallons. 3.9 million gallons can be diverted from Wahe'e, and 1 million gallons can be diverted from South <coughs> Wahe'e. And I believe that um, Mahipono is appealing to the Hawaii Supreme Court also uh, based on that decision. 
So let's, I really want to jump into, again, the topic of our, uh, of this presentation, right, which is re restoring, uh, reclaiming and restoring traditional Hawaii system. But I thought it was really important to kind of lay out the history of where we have come, you know, um, you know, not just the last 20 years since our organization has been established, but really the overall, um, you know, timeline of, of how Hawaii how evolved from this large contiguous kalo growing region to now one of the smallest kalo growing region. In fact, there's more kalo being grown just in the Kianai Peninsula than all of that that is, you know, on Hawaii Hot today. And just to give you some figures, Kianai Peninsula is less than 150 acres. Um, and so, you know, what that final decision in 2021 didn't do is it didn't recognize nor provide a roadmap for how Kuleana Kahlo farmers will exercise their pertinent rights and traditional and customary rights related to access, restoration, or utilizing traditional Awai systems, right? So they gave these permits out, finally, uh, saying that, you know, these Kuleana Kahlo farmers, yes, I mean, we know that they have rights, we know that they're allowed allocated water, but and here's a permit to, to codify that use, right? But it's not like, you know, Field of Dreams where you build it and it'll come, right? So, so that's one of the issues is they allocated water, but they didn't provide a roadmap for understanding how to access that water to meet the needs of those permits. <clears throat> and so, you know, immediately following after the, the 21, 2021 decision in, in June or July of last year, I mean, you can see the newspapers, the news, they were picking up on this, saying that, wait a second, I thought this was a good decision. Um, but when in fact, uh, it left many of our Kuleana Kahlo farmers high and dry. Um, and, you know, you look at this schematic map, uh, I don't even want to try to attempt to explain this to you, but this is, this is the web of complexities of how the water distribution system works in the Waiiha. Who are the users, the pinks, the blues, the yellows, uh, differentiate those um, that have a pertinent rights, those that don't have a pertinent right, those that are kuleana uh, kalo farmers, those that are considered off-stream commercial uses. Um, and so, you know, this, this diagram or schematic map has taken, you know, over a decade um, to create. And still, we are fixing it, working with the Water Commission to, <coughs> you know, to show how things have evolved from the time uh, that our case started. And many of those that are on here, you know, they, they passed away and, and so the names don't even match up with the permit. And so it, there, there are some challenges. Um, and so I, I kind of want to take you through to what we are doing today as an organization or a community. And the day-to-day -day is again, advocacy, accountability, compliance, and enforcement. So many people thought, oh, you know, congratulations, the cases are done, 20 years of hard work. Um, so, you know, I guess you guys can just pack up and, you know, walk away and everything's going to be good. Um, when in fact, our work as an organization, as a Hui, as a community uh, is just beginning. Um, when you have interim interim flow numbers like 2.9 million gallons per day or 10 million gallons per day, you know, I always ask those that, you know, maybe we're touring around the Hawaii or students that come up to our farm and I'm like, can you look at the stream and tell me if that's 2.9 million gallons? I mean, even myself who has been, you know, very active in this, uh, you know, from the very beginning, I, I couldn't tell you exactly the exact amount, million gallons per day that is in our stream. And so we needed to establish real-time gauges that allowed us to have 24 seven access to data to ensure that Wailuku Water Company, who's the main diverter of, of our streams, are in compliance with these, not just the interim in-stream flow standards, but all the permits and the amounts of these permits that were uh, you know, divvied out to Kuriana Kalo farmers. And so we need to ensure that we're not only holding them accountable, but that we're holding the State Commission on Water Resource Management accountable to ensure that they are enforcing the laws that they have established and the decision and orders that they have put forth. Um, and those are some of the challenges uh, that we deal with day to day. 
I'm, I think we can say that we've made some huge headway. Um, all forest streams now have some type of gauging systems. Like a pool has a real-time gauge. I can check on my phone right now and tell you exactly how much water is in our stream and how much water is being diverted. And say the same about Wahe'e, and say the same about Wailuku. And in Wa'ehu, we have um, a different type of gauging system, but again, allows us to monitor these streams pretty much on a daily basis. And so when we talk about access, um, you know, an ability for our cattle farmers to, um, to connect to their sources and maintain their sources, steward their sources, manage their sources. Um, from our point of view, it's, it's, it's crystal clear. But from the decision and order point of view that the commission handed down, um, there was a lot of gray area. And unfortunately, our state has not caught up with the Kuana Ike Hawaii or the perspectives from Kamaka that land and water are intimately and symbiotically tied together. From the Water Commission's point of view, water and land are two separate entities, two separate resources, and the two have very different forms of jurisdiction which is why <clears throat> when they provided all of these permits, but yet our Kuleana Kalo farmers uh, were um, really uh, having no ability to, to go up to the systems, many of which were, they rely on the plantation systems to, uh, to, to uh, feed their Kuleana Awais, um, but to, to rely on you know, uh, a water company that uh, has a skeleton crew um, of, of workers to be able to maintain these systems on a regular basis, knowing that many of these kalo farmers grow kalo not just for the community, but for their ohana. And when they go without water for one, two, three, one week, two weeks, one year, that's happened, um, is just um, a total injustice. And so um, I thank some of our uh, state senators specifically Lorraine uh, Noy from Hilo, who heard, the, who heard our kahea and heard our plight that, you know, wait a second, this decision that you know, sounded really good on paper really was not translating to what it was really meant to be, which was allowing the growth of our food system, once again, and restoration of our food system. So we spent time with our legislature, uh, our senators, um, to come up with uh, and implement Act 27, which um, I am you know, honored that we could work with the white only taro farmers from Kauai um, to, to create language, not just to uh, support their work uh, that they're doing on Kauai, but also to really make the language in the state water code very crystal clear around access, which, you know, I just took a, a little snippet out of that, um, that, uh, that law that we passed and was signed by the governor about two months ago that specifies, that says it recognizes, confirms, and protects traditional and customary and kuleana rights to fresh water, including rights to access, deliver, and the quality of water. And that really is, um, and I apologize for just the long drawn out <clears throat> background of this case, but this is really where we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of, of the reclaiming and restoration of our um, Awai systems. We know that historically Awai systems were, 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 um, were, were Po'owai, also known as Manawai. They were constructed as low loose wall Puhaku in the streams. And, you know, only enough water to raise sufficiently to flow into the Awai, which should enter uh, at almost level. No Awai was permitted to take more water than and continue to flow in the stream or river below the Po'owai. The rights of those living and cultivating Kalo Makai needed to be regarded. Uh, you know, again, this is pre-Western contact, you know, um, uh, practices and enforcement and management. The Lunawai or the water superintendent controlled the water system. Uh, giving uh, that gave the proportion of water to each Mo'oaina or Kuriana land. 
new construction of a po'olai or monoai um, was an occasion for rejoicing, feasting, and was never hurriedly done. Sometimes even an emu was made in the center of the awai near the point where the water was, uh, was to enter as to consecrate the new construction, right? And these, uh, you know, these practice were, practices were strictly enforced. Um, and that anybody that was neglecting to uphold the kuleana, which is why we call these lands kuleana lands, right? It's because it was not just the responsibility of the individual, but it was a responsibility of the collective. And if they were not upholding their kuleana and responsibility um, to maintain and manage not just their portion, but the but the source of that uh, of that system, um, or even if they mismanaged it. Um, there, there, there was a reckoning to be done, right? And we, and we, we see that written in, in a number of historical accounts. But there's always a caveat that states that rarely did this ever happen. And, and obviously that makes total sense because why would our kupuna have mismanaged the systems that bring life not only to their land, but to their family? So, you know, as many as, as um, a serious of uh, repercussions that that could occur when someone was mismanaging s- systems it was almost a rarity whereby anybody was you know anybody's body was you know, literally placed into the po'oi um you know as stated in in here the water rights were primarily for lo'ikala cultivation you know other crops like maita and ko and um and ulu were you know planted along the kuauna of lo'ikala to ensure that um, you know the moisture that came forth from these um, what we call the systems and seepage that occurred helped provide life for these other important um, plants that were part of the overall uh, agricultural and agroforestry complex. And so we're just going to dive right in the specifics. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> talking about the, the reclaiming and restoration of these away systems. Tonight, I'm going to specifically talk about Waikapu and Wahe'e because these are two particular areas that are um, that we're having some real serious challenges with um, and, and where we feel that we can test um, Act 27 to its fullest uh, form, right, in terms of access and, uh, and rights to access or um, Puliana um, auto cultivation. So here in White Waikabu Stream, we have three major diversions. We have the South Waikabu Diversion um, <clears throat> that diverts um, water now predominantly only for Kuliana uh, users, Kalo farmers on the south side of Waikabu Stream. There is some offshore use, uh, offstream use, excuse me, of, of this water from the system that's used for cattle um, and some diversified ag, but predominantly most of the water that is now diverted from that system uh, feeds uh, Lo'ikalo systems in the southern portion of Waikapu Stream. The Wahe'e Ditch Diversion Intake on Waikapu Stream also um, takes a portion of stream flow specifically to Maui Chapel Plantation, um, the King Kamehameha Golf Course, uh, Uncle Bobby Pahia, and other um, large, uh, larger um, you know, commercial um, farming happening in the southern part of Waikapu. And reservoir number six intake is uh, no longer in use, it's currently closed. And so what you see here in this particular diagram, um, on the right side here, again, I hope you can see my cursor, and I apologize if you can't, but that darker blue line is the Waikabu stream. Everything that you see in red, uh, where the stream you know, um, dissects right in the middle, to the right, you have the north Waikabu Kuleana parcels, which is where my Ohana and 16 others cultivate Kalo. Our, our uh, Aoi system feeds directly into the stream. So you know, some of the pictures that you saw earlier of the of Po'owai examples, that's our Po'owai. And we're one of the few remaining Aoi systems in Nawaiiha that still connects to the stream traditionally in the exact same location that it was constructed, you know, two, three, four hundred years ago. Versus those Kuleanakalo farmers on the south side of Waikabu stream, which are reliant upon the Waiduku Water Company um, diversion and irrigation system. And so those systems, right, you know, delivers water through you know, open ditches, you know, over 
two miles in the valley, you know, behind the valley, that then feed a reservoir where water stagnates, then it goes into, you know, a pressurized pipeline that comes with a whole plethora of challenges. Um, you know, although the current landowner there has um, really uh, come out in support of the Kuriana Kalo farmers, um, you know, the system is, 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 is uh, challenged. It's, you know, it, it delivers water in a downward trend, in downslope uh, for one mile, and there's a lot of pressure that needs to be um, you know, managed to ensure that the line doesn't blow up and that there's you know, too much water flowing into the system. And so what, we, what we're having is uh, an opportunity with this Act 27, because we've realized that the original Malau Kuliana Awai that once fed these Kuliana lands is still pretty much intact even though it hasn't been used since around 1906 when this plantation system was established. And so what we're trying to do um, is to work with the community, work with the current landowner where that away um, feeds back into the stream of Waikapu to restore that Kuleana away so that Waikapu can, and, our, and the Kuleana Kalo farmers can be completely independent from any former plantation or Wailuku water company system. And that would be the first in the Iha, be the first Ahupua. Um, and we, you know, as we're working on this, right, you know, it's important to understand how these systems once functioned, where they were constructed. Um, you know, the historical documentation is really critical. You see these maps, you know, from as early as 1852 in the Kuliana Awards, um, that you see the Awai existed. Um, you see in Wailuku Sugar Company maps that, you know, in 1910, that the Awai was still um, being utilized for those Kuliana uh, Kalo farmers below. And even when Montserrat went around during the Hawaiian Kingdom government surveys, um, he also notated this particular Awai that was in use. Uh, in Waihe'e, we have a similar situation. The north uh, section or Kuliana uh, Kalo complex uh, ties back into directly into the stream um, via a po'owai or manawai and uh, it feeds you know 10 plus Kuriana users but you have those to the south uh, of Waihe'e stream rely upon the Spreckles uh, ditch uh, diversion intake as well as the Waihe'e ditch intake um, and you know currently at this exact moment um, uh, North Waihe'e Kuliana Awai is, is offline. It's been offline since the uh, uh, 100 year storm and flood of February, 2018. Um, we have 20 plus allocated permit permittees in uh, on the south of Waihe'e who um, uh, get water directly from Spreckles and uh, Waihe'e ditch, but Wailuku Water Company is not compliant, is not giving them the allocated amount. And so we visited today um, some Kuriana lands in the south side, all of their Lo'ikalo are completely dry. It's been dry, not just for a few days, but going on weeks and months now. Um, and so <clears throat> you can see here, this is the schematic map that we put together from the Hu to show what Kuriana lands are still being utilized um, off the, the traditional system and a project that we're working on to restore um, the North Wahe'e Kuriana away. Um, this is a project you can see here in the left picture. You can see what the Awai looked like. Um, literally about two weeks uh, after we did this, uh, just out the community work day uh, with the Hui and some community members, that area that we're standing in, 128 feet of that Awai um, and Po Awai was completely destroyed in the February 18, 2018 flood. And while <clears throat> there were you know, numerous community work days to try to restore the Awai. Um, the stream just wasn't having it. Um, it's a big Awai. I mean, you can imagine that you could probably fit a small vehicle in this Awai. That's how large it was. Um, and so we need additional support. Um, and so we uh, filed a permit um, to um, utilize some other uh, strategies to um, reinforce and to reconstruct that 128 feet of a way that was damaged. And again, to the south, you see a lot of users, you know, everyone from small Kuriana users to large users, such as Hawaiian Islands Land Trust. You know, over 4 million gallons was 
uh, million gallons was allocated um, for traditional and customary rights uh, via water use permits. And to date, there's less than a million gallons being uh, delivered by Wailuku Water Company. So they're not in compliance. Um, but that Act 27, again, um, gives us opportunity to you know, come together as a community, a uh, greater community and Ahupua'a uh, Awahe to maybe look at restoring the Awai back to the stream or back to the Wahe'e River versus, again, having to rely on these derelict, old, um, just, um, you know, systems that are that do not benefit uh, the Kuleana Kalo farmers. You can see here, this is a site visit that we did with the State Water Commission not that long ago, in fact, just about a month ago. That's a speckles ditch that you see on the left side <clears throat> that is maintained and managed by Wailuku Water Company. There's a good flow of water that day, um, but there's a small five inch pipe that's inside of that, that system that Wailuku Water Company installed, you know, who knows how long ago, you know, 50, 60 years ago, and drops less than you know, 2 million gallons into the Hawaii. When we know that this Hawaii flows more than uh, 2.5 miles long. And so, by the time it reaches you know, to the, to the mid midpoint, the uh, Awai, as you can see in that upper right hand picture, is, is pretty much dry. Um, so we're working with the Wahe'e community, everyone from Hawaiian Islands Land Trust to the Lai Ohana, the Kahalekai Kale Ohana, uh, Pailopo Learning Center, um, just a number of Kuleana Kala farmers coming together to make sure that um, you know, the state is enforcing the permits and the allocated amount of water that they put forth in the, the decision and order, which are not, which is currently not being met. So, you know, there might be some questions, right? What are what really are the benefits of Kuleana-based, you know, Hawaii management systems? One is efficiency. Uh, it's to reduce loss. These systems that that our Kuleana Kalo farmers rely on from the plantations systems go miles into the valley, you know, whereby if they were connecting directly back to the stream from the traditional system that once existed, um, we're talking about um, you know, eliminating a huge run um, that is, is, is poorly maintained. And then of course, giving uh, the community the ability to maintain and manage the system and no longer be controlled by Wai Water Company really truly recognizing the traditional practices and customary rights and access. Um, and so we're, we're trying this model out in, in Waikapu and Waihe'e um, so that it, 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 it's not just a model for the greater Ahupua and Nova'iha and, and island of Maui, but really to demonstrate that this can be done across the Pai'aina, that we don't need to be dependent on uh, the plantation era systems and ditch systems. Now, that's not going to work for everybody, you know. Uh, we'll be the first to tell you that many of those that cultivate kalo in Waiehu, many of those that cultivate kalo in Wailuku, um, or what's left of the traditional kodana lands in Wailuku, uh, will have to be dependent, for the most part, be dependent upon these plantation systems because um, those Awai systems, like the Kalani Awai, the Kama Awai, um, were completely destroyed by the plantation, um, you know, by building new systems uh, in different locations. Uh, there's a, you know, many people don't realize that there's still a small Kuliana Awai that flows right through Wailuku town um, by, you know, adjacent to a Wailuku library, adjacent to the, uh, the, the county building next to Ichiban a restaurant in Wailuku, and it's called the Kalua Awai. That Awai originally connected to was a branch off of the Kama Awai off the Wailuku River. Today, that Awai, although it's flowing uh, to uh, you know, some of the Kuleana lands, its water source now comes from Wahe'e River, no longer comes from Wailuku River. And, and there's really no ability for that water to, con for that Awai to reconnect to Wailuku River. So some of these plantation systems have to you know, continue to stay um, at bay, which is why long-term, our organization uh, is advocating for this public trust resources and these ditch systems to be acquired by um, 
by the state and or county. Um, you know, and not everybody agrees with us on that. Uh, again, you know, full transparency. Um, you know, I I think there's um, some legitimate skepticism that many have uh, with the county and or state um, acquiring and managing the system. Um, but we believe that um, they can be better partners. Uh, they can come to the table. They they can, um, you know, hopefully formalize a stronger collaborative approach to managing some of these plantation systems than, than the current landowner that and, and owner of the system right now, which is why they water companies. Um, you know, part of the community-based management is also requiring government agencies to, to ensure best management practices are being followed. You see that bottom right photograph there, you know, uh, the county um, after the 2016 flood on Wendigo River, contracted a company from, I believe it was Texas, to come in and fix the levees along Mill Street and um, Yale Parkside. And these folks don't understand, they don't kilo, they don't observe and know the intricacies and, um, you know, of, our, of our streams and how they function, you know, with just a little bit of rain. Uh, and so they had you know, these massive culverts that were put into Wailuku River to, um, you know, to protect the Malkutumakai stream flow or what they thought was protecting Malkutumakai stream flow. And then uh, just a small little flash flood you know, came forth and over 20 of these massive plastic uh, culverts, you know, I think they were uh, 20 feet long by um, three feet in diameter, all washed out into the Bay of Wailuku. Um, which only five could be recovered. And the other 15 are still there today on our reefs. Um, so this is the kind of work now that the Hui has to have uh, and, and do is to monitor all of the type of work. And you know, we can appreciate the county, um, you know, public, uh, public works for um, working with, with the Hui. We've conducted a number of trainings with them and we look forward to strengthening that relationship. So that they know when they go into Wailuku River to clean the debris basin, they're doing it in a manner and at a time that doesn't disrupt the spawning season of our native aquatic species. That doesn't disturb the Aipo uh, and native uh, uh, fauna that that uh, that that are um, that you know use the stream as their habitat, and that it doesn't disturb you know, tradition, traditional customary practices of the Kalo farmers that rely on those spring-fed uh, water. In the lower reaches of the stream. So, um, you know, I think, you know, it's it's all of our Kuleana, right? It's all of our responsibility to be educated uh, about our water resources, um, to know our ground and surface water, you know, resources are finite, um, and that we, we need to start spending more time, you know, focused on kilo and observing um, our watersheds, Malkuts and Makai. And, you know, right now, you're in the worst drought, one of the worst drought we've ever experienced ever in the Baitiha. Our streams, some of our streams um, at, at certain periods of time in the last year and a half aren't even flowing at the interim in-stream flow uh, standard that was, um, that was allocated for these streams. So it's, it's scary times. And so we need to, to be informed. We need to be... Um, uh, you know, just following uh, what's going on, you know, and getting involved, just overall getting involved with not just organizations like ourselves, but there's a plethora of great Aina community-based uh, organizations that um, also share the same mission and vision and um, the work that we are doing in, in the Waiiha. So, Feel free. You can check us out on, of course, all the social media stuff. Um, you can check out our website to learn more about what we do. Um, you know, um, I can send this to you know, anybody who wants to see, um, you know, or learn more about what we're doing. But I, I, I definitely tell people to check out our website to learn more about what our organization is doing. And just mahalo, mahalo ya oko I just appreciate all of you for joining us this evening. Um, Hopefully I didn't put any of you to sleep. Um, I know there's a lot of facts and figures, um, but as I said- the No, work... there's plenty of questions. Oh, gosh, definitely. Okay. All right, <laughs> well, I'll I've just... been watching the Facebook. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, we still have a little bit of time, and uh, I'm sure you know Tommy Fa Palafox Coluna. Um, so he was asking, what would you share regarding the new W? Oh, sorry. I live next to a stream. The, um, the water is small, and there's foreigners pumping waters from the river. How can Carroll farmers compete with this? I was told by officials that they would pay the fine, but what does that mean? Because they have a huge water tank, and then they go to the rivers to pump it with a water truck. Um, and is that okay now that he just paid a fine? And this is also on Maui, of course. Yeah, um, no, mahalo for that question. It, it, it's it's hard to um, <clears throat> answer that with explicit details, not knowing exactly where it's occurring. And I and I can understand it. Obviously, they don't want to share where that is. Um, if that's happening in a surface, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and groundwater management area like Nabai'i Ha, without permits, um, there there are definite, uh, you know, enforceable uh, fines that that can occur for people that are that are doing illegal activity. If that is what is occurring, of course. Um, but uh, you know, I always encourage folks to, to reach out. You know, especially if this, you know, if these kind of things are happening in Nabai'i Ha. Um, they can reach out to the Hui, our website, our, you know, we have a uh, ability to, you know, uh, directly, you know, uh, ask questions. Um, they, they, they can call us, they can email us. Um, but if it's something that's outside of our jurisdiction and area of management and, and care, um, to go directly to the Water Commission. Um, and if they're not getting the results that they need there, again, we're happy to share maybe how to navigate this, that, that process is, because it, it's complicated. Very complicated, as you know, Bianca, um, being involved yeah. in this for, for many years as well. <clears throat> um, so quick question. Um, are your slides available to share? This will be on Facebook, but if people just want your PDF slides or something. Um, absolutely. Um, a lot of what you see here is on our website. Um, uh, some of the stuff that I focused on today around Waikapu Wahe is, is not. Um, but I'm. Uh, if folks are interested, they can email Ui Onavai Eha. That's, uh, we own Hawaii, the number four at gmail.com <clears throat> and uh, happy to, to uh, share this out. Hope I got that right. Hui o Navai Eha four at gmail. Right. Uh, hui okay. o Navai four, the number four instead of spelled oh, out. Oh, no Eha. Um, I yeah. got it. Okay, I'll edit that. Okay. Um, and then so, na kaua e pale me ka ihe. She asked, any advice for our um, Mahia Kuliana? Um, this is in Mahaina, which is now a water management area um, designated place. These um, who are trying to get large landowners like Kamehameha schools to allow perpetual easements for restoring alvai, such as Pi'ilani alvai in Kawaula. Pretty specific question. Okay. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, when I, when I think about the work that we're trying to do in um, Wahe'e and Waikapu specifically, you know, based off this recent uh, legislation that was, um, and law that was passed, is um, looking at other areas around Maui and specifically the Moku of Lahaina and Ka'anapali that recently uh, received, uh, you know, designation for both groundwater and surface water management area and areas um, that, that could easily be, I don't want to say easily, but have the highest potential for Restoration and I absolutely see places like Kaua Ula, um, both to the north and the south side. I see places like Kanaha, um, like Kahoma, that um, through you know community-based you know management can can find ways to bring these alwai back to life to feed the systems that um, you know that are the agricultural complexes in the Kalo that once existed. So um, absolutely, I think you know the Hui has strongly supported. Um, uh, the Kuriana Kalo farmers of the Moku of Lahaina and Ka'anapali and uh, advocated for the, um, for the designation. And I'll just say that we will continue to be a resource and lend a helping hand whenever they need. Thank you. Um, this is a question from Faith Eubank Chase. Have you had feelings of second guessing the settlement agreement? No, I'll, I I like to be really transparent, especially when it comes to these particular issues, knowing that a lot of people are watching us, you know, not the presentation, but just 
<clears throat> watching the work that we're doing. And, um, you know, I, I, I will say that if we look at the predecessor of these lands, um, and, and I cannot speak on what's happening at East Maui um, at all, because I, I just, I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the wherewithal. And we do absolutely support, um, you know, the Kodiana Kala farmers that are advocating for their restoration of their streams and their OY systems in East Maui. But I can, I can, I can say that working with the water resource management team um, of Mahipono compared to that of working or not even having a working relationship with ECNS really has been night and day. Um, you know, uh, you know, to date, most of the stipulated, uh, um, you know, agreement, most of the points have not been met yet, and it's not not necessarily to Mahipono's fault, um, but you know, these some of these agreements were meant to work in collaboration to achieve uh, achieve these goals, right? Uh, one of them is, you know, the restoration of the North Wahe'e Kuleana Awai. Um, you know, we felt really strongly, and some community members didn't, you know, I will say, weren't necessarily in full support of this, but at the end of the day, Mahipono receives most of their water from Wahe'e. And so when we came to the table with them, they said, well, the North Wahe'e Kuleana Awai is offline now because of the storm. We need support you know, greater than just the hands and feet and oh -oh that we carry. Um, and so we think it's your Koreana to come and co come and help us bring this Awai back to life. Um, and so we've been working on that together. Um, it hasn't happened yet, but I, we are confident that this is going to be the year that we're going to see life come back to that Awai and these Koreana Kala farmers. And so, you know, I can only speak um, to what we, uh, we are working on. You know, uh, we don't know what the long term is. You know, we, we're we're trying to get you know by day to day, um, and when we look at those figures, you know, from forty million gallons down to five million gallons, you know, from our perspective, um, that that's that's a win. You know, where we we've been able to put majority of that water back into the stream, and to reduce a large, you know, large scale agricultural entity. Um, by more than half of their um, you know, water allocation. Again, you know, I, I know East Maui is a different beast um, and, and has different challenges, um, but for them so far, it has been, um, it has been working out. Um, I think just one more question. Sorry, my computer is acting up a little bit. Uh, that cultural landscape um, piece that you put up one of your first slides, how did you create that, or did you create that? Um, Puali, yeah, that yeah. one. Uh, the one with the Puali Komohan, I believe. I think that was, yeah. was um, so, which, you know, very simple, you know, GIS um, overlay that we did with some historical maps. And, and we know that, um, which is why I put Puali Komohana and Wailuku and Nabaitiha, because we know that there have been different names and iterations. We know that even the boundaries, traditional boundaries have, um, have changed over time. We typically, based on the work that we do, because it is very much tied to the Mahale and Mahale Awards, we tend to go off a lot of the Hawaiian government surveys. And so that overlay represents what the Hawaiian kingdom had uh, set forth in their, um, in the mapping of, of, of our Pai Aina and our Ahupua'a and our Moku, excuse me, Moku systems. Um, the names and the inoa of those Fahipana that are, are inside of that particular map are, you know, decades of work that you know, myself and many, many others uh, have brought forth to bring back, you know, the historical names of these places. You know, it's not just Wailuku River, but it's Kinihapai and, you know, uh, Nahuahua and Nakalaloa, which, you know, enter into Wailuku River at a certain point and Hulu Pueo in, and Ilele in Wahe'e. So, you know, as part of our educational outreach, also trying to bring to life these Inoa you Kahiko know, and these historical you know, place names um, that are intimately tied to play. Happy to share that too. And that map is actually, you know, she's kind of old. Um, you know, I think we've updated quite a bit uh, over time, but, you know, happy to share um, this with, with anybody who's, who's interested. Um, and so I guess any last words to share? 
um, as we head out of here. And thank you so much for this. This is amazing. I feel like we need to have you back and hear what's happening with all the, you know, how things shake down and then also maybe comment specifically more on like Lahaina. Um, you know, I, I, I just, you know, appreciate all the work that the community um, has, has done to really rally behind our organization. Um, and so we feel it absolutely is our koleana to do the same for not just our community, but also the community and our neighboring communities, which is why we've, you know, come, come out, you know, very strong in support for koleana kalo farmers from Ukumehame to Honokohau. Um, and we will continue to do that um, with the support of those farmers. And, and, I, and I hope that someday, you know, that we don't have these three separate moku entities. You know, right now it's Ruana Waiiha. We have, you know, um, you know, groups in, in uh, Wahe, um, excuse me, in Lahaina and Kaanapali. I would love to see a Mauna or Eka or West Maui or Maui Komohana. Or, well, I don't know. Just, you know, team up at, where we can really be um, unified at, as, um, as a collective. Even that with those from East Maui, you know, with Namoku um, and others. I mean, the work that they are doing out there, um, you know, some of the stuff that they're doing, they're light years ahead of us, you know. And so we have a lot to learn from each other. We have a lot to um, work towards in supporting each other. And I think that's that's what I enjoy most about this is learning from each other. Um, you know, we don't have all the answers, and I will never attest that we. We do. Yeah, we've been doing this for 20 years, but our kupuna have been doing this for generations. And uh, we have a lot of catching up to do, uh, a lot of learning to do, and just a lot of continued advocacy and education for the next generation to ensure that the work that we're, done, we're doing is not going to, you know, go up in flames or, or be left, you know, in, in, in vain. So, and I appreciate the work that you're doing, Bianca, and, and others. Um, you know, it, it's, it's really important really important so mahalo mahalo to all of you for joining us again thank you for that and thank you for coming here today and for <coughs> everything you're doing so good night uh -huh.